Hello everyone, my name is Troy and welcome to another homebrew update. We got some great news from the ReSwitch team over on the Nintendo Switch, as well as a huge new exploit coming out on the PS3 and more updates on the exploit of the PS4. So let's go ahead and jump right in. A little bit over a week ago, the developer Pluto got a code execution on the Nintendo Switch. He was able to run his own homebrew and things like that. This time, the ReSwitch team has also got their own code execution on it. This is amazing news because that means that we will get a publicly released code execution way. Now, it is only a user land exploit, it's not a full-fledged exploit. What that means is that we can only run our own code. We can't actually, say, run backups or anything like that. We can run our own homebrew games and homebrew apps, you know, like if you want a homebrew Tetris or something like that. Or better yet, if you want, say, emulators to be able to run Doom, that can happen in the future. But once this is fully released, that means that I will finally be able to start work on another piano application. I did one back on the 3DS and it was really, really fun to learn. That was my first time actually learning how to make my own homebrew game and it was just a really cool time and really fun learning experience. You do need to keep in mind though, you need to be on firmware 3.0.0 to actually run any type of exploit right now. That is because all the other firmwares have it either patched or do not even have the exploit at all. So if you're on 3.0.1, I'm sorry guys, you're just gonna have to wait for another exploit, but if you are under 3.0.0, say like 2.0, all you have to do is get your own copy of Pokémon Tournament and update through the cartridge and never connect to the internet again because you don't want to, of course, update by accident. That wouldn't be fun if you've been waiting for homebrew for a while. Next up on the list is going to be the 3DS emulator Citra. Citra is a very well-known 3DS emulator that's been working for quite a while. I myself actually haven't used it, but from what I've heard, it's able to say run Mario Kart at perfect frame rate for you, where you know there's no lag. Granted, it does also depend on your specs of the computer, but in general, you should have no problems running games on it. The news I have for you about the Citrus aim layer, though, is that now they have network play added. This won't let you connect to the actual Nintendo network servers, say if you want to play a Mario Kart 7 race online, you can't connect to this actual service for it. But just like how you can do it on X-Link Kai with the Xbox, Xbox 360, uh, and do local games. You can do that now on the Citra emulator. So you can create a local game on Mario Kart 7 and then you connect to other people who have local games and you can race them. This is awesome news and please guys tell me how it is. I myself have a regular 3DS and I have Mario Kart 7 so I really don't need to test it. I really don't need to play it that way. I mean I guess I can. I just, I just don't really feel like setting it all up. And I have a Mac. I don't know how well it will run on a Mac. Done with the Nintendo, on to Sony. For all the people still waiting for a PS4 exploit, I got some great news for you, but you'll still have to be patient. Over at Wololo.net, the owner, Wololo, talked to the famous PS4 dev, Spectre Dev. They were talking about the PS4 exploit and when it will come out, Spectre Dev specifically said it will be in the coming weeks. Coming weeks doesn't really mean, say, you know, two weeks, it doesn't mean five weeks we don't really know we'll just have to wait for all we know it could be two months because two months is four is eight weeks i almost said four weeks it's eight weeks but that's great news guys because that means he will actually be releasing the exploit we just don't know exactly when he did say he would be putting up a whole write-up of how the exploit works and all that that way you could do a read-up on it if you're very interested in that i am even though i don't know what a lot of it means I'm very excited for the PS4 exploit because that means I can finally get out my PS4 that's been sitting in the closet for around 2-3 months and do homebrew on it. So very very excited for that. Over on the PS3 we got some good news, some bad news, and some great and or amazing news. The developer Escort Do, I'm just gonna call him Mr. E for short because I don't, I just don't really care for saying that name. I don't know why, it just, well there's numbers and letters in it and it's just weird. The developer Mr. E has said he will be releasing an exploit for the newest PS3 firmware, 4.81. Bad news, it got leaked. Only one part got leaked though. The one part is was a what they call a IDPS dumper. Essentially it's a console ID and it gets sent to Sony every single time you go online. But that IDPS dumper actually wasn't fully finished. 
A few people have gotten it to work, but the majority of people have not gotten it to work. What's the amazing news you might be asking? The amazing news is that the developer, Mr. E, even though part of the exploit got leaked, he is still going to be working on it. Most of the people who work on exploits and it gets leaked, they do not actually finish the exploit. They'll just leave it as is because they get frustrated about all the hard work they put into it and it just kind of gets out there without it even being finished. Congrats to you, Mr. E, for actually finishing your exploit. So, what can the exploit actually do and why is it so important? Well, if you recall, the very last exploit that was on 3.55 on the PS3, which was seven years ago. Yes, seven. We haven't actually had a full exploit on the PS3 for seven years. Crazy. I am so glad Mr. E has actually been able to take time for us all to put a new exploit out. Now, the new exploit, like I said, will be on 4.81. But not only that, it'll work on every single PS3. Yes, that even means the super slims, the ones that look like a grill. Soon guys, on the PS3, you'll be able to run your own full-fledged custom firmware. I am so excited because I haven't had the chance to actually be able to run Homebrew since my 3.55 console, and that one just yellow lighted to death. I couldn't do anything about it. I tried to fix it, couldn't fix it. Ever since then, I haven't had a PS3 that could actually run Homebrew on it. One more thing that Mr. E is trying to get done with is he's trying to get rid of the NAND slash NOR firmware dumpers or flash riders, whatever you want to call them. The new exploit that he has will actually be able to flash the NAND slash NOR chips in your PS3, which is awesome. So amazing. You won't have to waste time waiting on for it to come in, for the NAND slash NOR device to come in so you could actually flash it, nor will you have to waste any money. And who doesn't want that? Well guys, that's it for this week's episode. I will finish off with the question I asked you all last week. That question was, what is your favorite console to homebrew slash exploit slash soft mod, whatever you want to term it? My favorite one is the 3DS. The reason is because I started off with that system from the very beginning back when the very first custom firmware got leaked. My second runner up was the PS2 because that was the very first console I actually ever exploited back before Free McBoot when you needed a PS1 game. We called that the Trigger Disc. Who remembers that? And with this week, I'll leave you with this question. What console are you waiting for an exploit to come out the most? Whether that's the Switch, the PS3, the PS4, you know, maybe even like the GameCube or who knows, the Xbox One, the original Xbox. No, you don't need anything for original Xbox. Anyway, guys, that's the question here. Leave it in the comments below. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit that subscribe button as well as that thumbs up button to show me that you really liked it. And I will see you all next update.